suppose that a car passes Josh's house while traveling at 65 miles per hour. Further suppose that one hour later, a second car passes Josh's house, and this time it's traveling at 73 miles per hour. How long after the second car passes my house will it catch up to the first car that passed my house? Okay, often these kind of problems show up in physics or in algebra, and so the algebra of this problem is one that is very generic. We can put this into a generic form that could be useful for many different types of problems. And the key to noticing that it's of this form is to see or to understand that there's a formula floating around in the background here, and it's kind of a famous one. It's that if you take a rate and you multiply it by a time, you'll always get a distance. This is fairly easy to remember if you think about units. For example, rates are often something like miles per hour if you're in a car, and then time can be measured in hours, and if you look closely, you'll notice the hours cancel out and leave you with miles, which is a kind of normal uh, way of measuring distance. So you can remember rate times time equals distance. So I'm going to be able to take this information. I encourage you to pause the video and either take a screenshot or record that information there on a piece of paper. So when I go over and I'm going to create a chart out of this that's going to organize the information nicely together. So I'm going to come over to this next screen, make myself a chart. Do, 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 do. I always do three by three because I can never tell when I'm going to need a total or not. Sometimes I sometimes I could use a total and sometimes not. But since the formula is rate times time equals distance, on this screen I'm going to put a rate, and I'm going to put a time, because I know that rate times time will be equal to distance. And then in the problem, there were two different cars. There was the first car that came by my house, and then there was a second car that drove by my house. What was the rate, what were the rates of the cars? Well, the first car was the car that passes at 65 miles per hour, and the second car was a car that passes at 73 miles per hour. So, car one, 65 miles per hour, car two, 73 miles per hour. Time. How long after the second car passes my house will it catch up to the first car? So that's really the unknown of the problem. That's what we're trying to find. So let's assign a variable. We'll assign the variable to car 1. We'll say it drives for x hours. And remember that car 2 passed how long? An hour later. An hour later. So technically, the amount of time that the car 2 will have driven past my house will be one less hours than the first car had traveled, because the first car would have passed my house, then one hour later that second car finally passes my house. Now thanks to the equation lurking around in the background, rate times time, 65 times x, yields the distance the car 1 would have traveled, and 73 times x minus 1, which is 73x minus 73 after the distributive property, yields the amount of distance that car 2 would have traveled. Now these two equations, or these two expressions, are going to be useful for putting the problem together. Okay, how are we going to put them together? Well, we are wondering when do they meet up with each other? When do the two cars meet up with each other? And in order to meet up with each other, that means they would have traveled the same distance past Josh's house. Same distance past Josh's house. So we're going to set the equations equal to each other. And now we're in algebra land. Subtract 73x from both sides of the equation negative 8x equals negative 73. Divide by negative 8 on both sides. x equals 9.125. So the answer is 9.125 hours for the value of x. Now let's remind ourselves, what are we looking for? How long after 
the second car passes. So we want to know how long the second car was driving for, not the first car. So if we look back at our chart, notice that this x that we did all this work to solve for is the amount of time that the first car was traveling. Since the problem wants to know what is the amount of time the second car has been traveling, how long past the time the second car went past my house, we will have to take that x minus 1 expression. We know that x is 9.125 and then subtract 1 from that. And so the answer we would input here to the test to make sure that we get the answer correct would be 8.125 hours.